In this video, we're going to talk about uh, the first section in Chapter 3 dealing with uh, polynomial and rational functions. That first section deals with quadratic functions. We'll start with that section. And in that section, we're going to talk about how to recognize characteristic, characteristics of parabolas, graphing parabolas, and determining a quadratic function's minimum and maximum values. Okay. So, the first thing we'll talk about here is graphs of quadratic functions. Let me blow this up a little bit. All right, so now, let's uh, define what a quadratic function is. Okay, here's the definition. A quadratic function is any function of the form f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers with a not equaling to zero. Okay, that's going to be very important because if a was equal to zero, then that x squared term, when it's multiplied by a, which is zero, will be gone. And all you'll be left with is a linear function and not a quadratic function. Now, all quadratic functions have graphs that have a special name. It's called a parabola. So, here's the definition of what a parabola parabola is. A parabola is a graph of any quadratic function that is shaped like a cup. So pretty much in a cup, it's either going to hold water or spill water. And it all depends upon your coefficient of your x squared term, whether it's going to be opening upward or downward. So here, if your a, that's the coefficient of your x squared term, is positive or greater than zero, then that means your parabola will be opening upward. Or if A is negative, that means A is less than zero, that means the parabola will be opening downward. Okay. Now, I'll scroll up a bit so that way you'll see what a parabola, parabola looks like. Okay. On the left, you can see that the parabola opens upward like this. And I'm going to use. Okay. Okay. So here I'm going to use this right here. You can see that parabola opens upward. Okay. And here, you see A is positive, that means the parabola opens upward. Now on the right, your A is negative, that means it's less than zero. The parabola opens downward, just like you can see right here. This parabola opens in the downward direction. Okay. Now there are two important pieces that are in A. Parabola. One of them is the vertex, the other is the axis of symmetry. All right, let's first talk about let's talk about the vertex. Here the vertex or the turning point. That vertex is going to be the lowest point on the graph when it opens upward, or the highest point on the graph when it opens downward. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see where the vertex is. So in this case here, this is where the vertex is. Right down here, that's the vertex. That's the lowest point on that graph here. If the parabola goes downward, reaches its lowest point, and then it goes upward. Now the one on the right, the vertex is the highest point on that graph, as you can see. It goes up, the graph goes upward, reaches its highest point or its peak, and then it starts going in the downward direction. Okay, so that's what the uh, vertex is and what it looks like. Okay, now there's another definition that I need to present to you, and that is the 
axis of symmetry, which is this right here. The axis of symmetry is the line that crosses the vertex and separates the parabola into two equal parts. So here, when it's separated into two equal parts, the left side of the parabola has becomes a mirror image of the right side. So if you look at the graph on the left-hand side, you'll see what that axis of symmetry looks like. So here's that axis of symmetry, as you can see. It's a vertical line, crosses the vertex, and it separates it into two equal parts, separates the parabola into two equal parts. The same here for the other graph. That's your axis of symmetry, that vertical dotted line. Okay, so those are the only two, only types of characteristics that we need to talk about dealing with a quadratic function or a parabola. Okay. All right, now, next we'll look at the quadratic equation written in standard form. Okay. Let me erase all of this. Okay, because I don't know why I didn't do that. All right, in this case, of the standard form for a quadratic uh, Sorry about that. All right, now, the standard form for a quadratic function is this. F of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And here the only restriction here is that a is not equal to 0. Because if a was equal to 0, then you would not have a quadratic function to begin with. So, when it's written in standard form, there are some pieces of information we can identify in this case. One of them is the vertex. And that's going to be h comma k. The other is the axis of symmetry, which is going to be x is equal to h. And the h will come from the x coordinate of the vertex. And then if a is greater than 0 or if a is positive, that means the parabola opens upward. Or if a is less than 0, that means that the parabola opens downward. Okay, now, there is a piece of information that I need to inform you about, and that is how to identify the H and the K. Here in this case, for this H that you see right here, you have to take the opposite sign, and I don't like this, it's too try this. Okay, here we go. Then you take the opposite sign of your H. So here, if you have an X plus H, then the H will be negative. Or if you have X minus H, then the H will be positive. Okay? That's very important. And then the K uh, is going to be whatever that sign is. If it's a plus, it's going to be a positive, or if it's minus, it'll be negative. Okay. Now, let's look at a couple of examples of how to identify the parabola, the vertex of the parabola. And not only that, we're going to talk about how to uh, identify the axis of symmetry as well. In part... In example one, we're going to find the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola defined by the quadratic function. And here that quadratic function is f of x is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 2. Now, as you can see, that particular 
equation or function is in standard form, which is, of course, f of x equaling to a times the quantity x minus h and then squared plus k. So from here, we can identify the vertex. Okay, so here, the vertex, I'm going to use different colors here. That's going to be h comma k. So here's h right here. When you see that minus 1, we take the opposite of minus 1, which is going to be a positive 1. So the h, which is the x coordinate by the vertex, is 1. And then the k, let me use a different color here. Let me use red. This is 2 right here. Well, minus 2. So here, it'd be negative 2. So the vertex there would be the ordered pair, 1, negative 2. And only that, we're going to also identify the axis of symmetry as well. That's always x is equal to h. Which means, in this case, that h is going to come from the x coordinate of the vertex. So it has to be x is equal to 1. Now keep in mind, the axis of symmetry is an equation of a line. So you must have x equal to whatever the x coordinate of that vertex is. So you don't want to leave that out. Okay? Now look at example two. Here you're going to find the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola defined by the quadratic function. In this case, f of x is equal to negative two times the quantity x plus five, quantity squared plus four. All right, so again, this particular equation is in standard form, which is f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h, and that's squared plus k. All right, so now we just need to identify what h and k are going to be. So we start by identifying the vertex. That's h comma k, which is in this case, here's your h right here. It says a plus 5, but we have to take the opposite of a positive 5, which is negative 5. And then for the k, that's right here. That's the 4. So the vertex would be the ordered pair, negative 5 and 4. And then next we're going to identify that axis of symmetry. Now of course the axis of symmetry will be x is equal to h, and h is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So that means x will be equal to whatever the x-coordinate of that vertex is, negative 5. And let me make my negative 5 look like a negative 5. Okay, excuse my handwriting. It's usually neat. So x equal negative 5 is the axis of symmetry, and the vertex is going to be negative 5, 4. Okay. So that's how we identify the vertex and the axis of symmetry. All right. Now, when we grab a quadratic function that's written in standard form, this will be the procedure for doing that. This is a procedure for graphing a quadratic function written in standard form. And that's f of x is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. The first step would be to determine whether the parabola opens upward or downward 
keep in mind that if your A, that's the number in front of the parentheses, is positive, that means it opens upward. Or, if your A is less than zero, that means if it's negative, that means your problem will be opening downward. And then step number two is to determine the vertex, which is the ordered pair H comma K. And we just did a couple of examples of identifying the uh, vertex. And also, while we're at it, we're going to also identify the axis of symmetry as well. Number three is finding any x-intercepts by letting f of x equal to zero. And then step number four is finding the y-intercept by letting x equal zero. And then step number five would be to plot all new intercepts, the vertex, and any additional points that you may need in order to make a smooth curve. That would be the procedure that you'll use to graph a quadratic function written in standard form. And of course, keep in mind that this is standard form. Okay. All right, now let's look at some examples, starting with example three. In this case, we're going to graph the quadratic function f of x is equal to the negative of the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 4. All right, and let me change my color. Okay, so here's what we have. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that equation f of x is equal to negative of the quantity x minus 1, that will be squared plus 4. All right, so the first step is to determine whether the parabola opens upward or downward. So here it needs to identify what a is. The a, well, there's no number in front of it except the understood one. So now in this case, my A is going to be negative 1. And since A is negative, that tells me that this problem will be opening in the downward direction. So this problem opens downward. So that's step number one, just like that. Identifying what A is and determining whether it's opening upward or downward. Since A is negative, the parabola opens downward. Number two is to identify the vertex. And also, we're going to identify the axis of symmetry as well. So, the vertex is always at H, uh, comma, K. The H is the number inside the parentheses next to the X. It says a minus 1, so the opposite of minus 1 will be a positive 1. So the x coordinate of the vertex is a 1. The y coordinate of the vertex is right here. So here's the y coordinate of the vertex. This is your h right here. So the vertex would be the ordered pair 1, 4. And now step number three, and we're going to have to do a little bit of work here to find the x-intercepts. Now, for the x-intercepts, we take our function, which is this, so the negative of x minus 1. quantity squared plus 4 and set that equal to 0. And then we're going to solve this for x. So here I need to get that negative of the quantity x minus 1 squared by itself. 
I'm adding four. So the first thing I'm going to do here is subtract four on both sides. So I got a negative of x minus one quantity square. Let me make that x look like an x. So this negative of x minus one quantity square is equal to negative four. But notice I got the negative in front of the x minus one quantity square, so I need to get rid of that by dividing both sides by negative one. So now we're gonna have x minus one quantity squared is equal to positive four. And then to get rid of that square, the opposite of squaring something would be to take its square root. And when I take the square root on both sides, I need to include the plus or minus symbol, like this. So the square root of x minus 1 quantity squared would be just simply x minus 1. It's equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 would be 2. So here I got x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2. That means I do have two equations, x minus 1 equals 2. The other equation will be x minus 1 equals negative 2. And then I solve each equation for x. So here for the x minus 1 is equal to 2. If I add 1, I'm going to get x is equal to 3. For x minus 1 is equal to negative 2. If I add 1, that would mean x is equal to negative 1. So these are my x-intercepts. Those are going to, be the, going to be the points where the graph of that parabola will be crossing the x-axis. And they're actually ordered pairs, which is going to be 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. So I'm going to highlight these. These are my x-intercepts. I'm also going to highlight the vertex here. So all of what I just did was step number three. All right, now step four. I'm going to do this underneath the coordinate grid. It's finding the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we have to let x equal 0. So we just simply substitute 0 in for x into that function at the top. So here we get f of 0 is equal to negative. Uh, we substitute the x with 0 minus 1 quantity squared plus 4. Bring down the negative sign and do 0 minus 1. That's going to be negative 1. And that's squared plus 4. All right, now, if I square, if I square this negative 1, that's going to be a positive 1. But then the negative sign on the outside will make that 1 a negative 1. And then negative 1 plus 4 would be 3. So this right here represents my y-intercept. And in this case, that y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair of 0, 3, because I let x equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. All right, now step number five is the graph. So this is going to be number five up here, the graph. So here I'm going to take the 
these pieces of information that I have highlighted and plot those on the coordinate plane. Okay. So now I'm going to use a different color, which is, I'm going to use red here to plot my points. First, I'm going to plot the vertex, which is, of course, 1, 4. So I go to the right one and up 4. And draw the point. There we go. All right. I did miss something here that acts as a symmetry. to say A O S for axis of symmetry, which is X is equal to the X coordinate of your vertex, which is one. That's your axis of symmetry. So now I'm gonna use green to draw in that axis of symmetry, which is gonna be that vertical dotted line going through the vertex. It's going to separate the graph into two equal parts. That's the axis of symmetry, that green line that you see here. Right, and now, my two x-intercepts are 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. That's these right here. So I'm going to go to, to the right 3 and draw the point in. And then negative one zero will be to the left one and it's going to be on the x axis. Okay. Now my y intercept, of course, is going to be the point zero three. So I go to stand zero, but go up to three and draw that point. Okay. Now, pay close attention to this axis of symmetry. And the distance it is from the y intercept. Here, this y intercept of 0, 3, that's one place to the left. So, if I want this to be symmetrical about this axis of symmetry, the other point must also be one to the right. So, that other point is going to be right here. So does everyone see how we got this particular point? And I'm going to kind of highlight it this right here. Because this point on the left is one place to the left. The other point has to be one place to the right. Okay, so now I do have enough points to make the graph of this parabola and it looks like this well I do it better when I do it by hand but here I'm doing it on a uh, on an iPad so this will, this will be the best that it will do okay all right now let's look at another example of graphing a quadratic function Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to example two. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, in this case here, we're going to graph the quadratic function f of x equal to x minus two quantity squared plus one. In this case, we need to let me change colors here and I'm going to rewrite that equation f of x is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1 so here we're going to go through that 5 step procedure and uh, graph this on the coordinate plane right, the first step is to determine whether the parabola opens up or the downward by identifying what a is well, in this case, the A, that, which is a number in front of the parentheses, is an understood 1. So that tells me what A is. A 
is equal to 1. And it is positive. A is a positive number in this case. So this parabola will be this time opening upward. And now the second step would be to identify the vertex. In this case, the vertex will be, of course, h comma k, since the equation is written in standard form, or the function is in standard form, by the way. All right, the h is going to be, I'm going to highlight this right here. It says minus 2, but the opposite of the minus 2 will be a plus 2. So the h will be 2, and here's your k. Positive 1. It will remain positive 1. So the order pair 2, 1 will be the vertex. And then the axis of symmetry, and I'm going to label this as AOS. That's going to be x is equal to whatever the x coordinate of that vertex is. In this case, 2. intercepts. So here we're going to take this function, set this equal to zero. So I'm going to take that x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1, set that equal to zero. And then we're going to solve this equation for x. So to get x minus 2 quantity squared by itself, I need to subtract 1. So that means I'm going to have x minus 2 quantity squared, and that's equal to negative 1. Now, to get, get rid of the square, the opposite of that would be to take the square root on both sides. And if I take the square root on both sides, I need to include that plus or minus symbol here. And here, x minus 2 quantity squared, if I take the square root of that, it's going to be x minus 2. And if you recall, the square root of negative 1, that's actually going to be i. So I get x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus i. Now here we got a problem with this one. It's that plus or minus i. That's an imaginary number because think about this. If I add two on both sides just to get x by itself, I got a pair of imaginary numbers. x is equal to 2 plus or minus i. And notice I cannot grab a pair of imaginary numbers on a coordinate plane. That's not going to work. So I can sit or think of this. If this parabola opens upward and the vertex is 2, 1, well, the order pair 2, 1 will be in the first quadrant. If it's opening upward, it's never going to, the graph will never cross the uh, x axis. So this parabola will have no x intercepts. No x intercepts. Okay. So that's step number three. Number four. Let's find the y intercepts. Well, just the y intercept. It's only going to be one. So here we've just let x equal zero. So we just substitute 0 for x into that function. So that means f of 0 would be equal to x we substitute with 0 minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. And then we simplify the right side. 0 minus 2 will be negative 2, and that's squared plus 1. 
keep in mind when you square a negative, it's going to be positive. So negative 2 squared will be 4 plus 1. This will end up being 5. So my y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair 0, 5. Okay. Let me go ahead and highlight that. And I'm also going to highlight my vertex. Axis of symmetry. I have no x-intercepts. Alright, so now we got all the information we need to do step number five. And that is to graph this quadratic function. Alright, so the first step would be to plot the vertex, which is the ordered pair 2, 1. So I'm going to go to the right 2 and up 1. Draw that point in. And then next I'm going to draw in that axis of symmetry. I'm going to use blue for the axis of symmetry. It goes through the vertex. And it's going to separate the parabola into two equal parts. So the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 2. And then next is, well, I have no x-intercepts. So I'm not going to be able to plot x-intercepts since it's opening upward. But I can plot the y-intercept of 0, 5. That's going to be... If I can get it on here, there we go. Now, I want you to take a look at this y-intercept with this axis of symmetry. That point, that y-intercept is two places to the left of the axis of symmetry. That would mean that the other point on the right side would have to be two places to the right. So it's going to be this point right here. So it's this point right here, if I can get it on there, yeah. Okay. Now, as you can see, that might not be enough points on here to just grab this particular parabola. But if you need to, you can use points like x equal 1. And then substitute 1 into that equation, and you'll end up getting something like, uh, I know this will be 2. And this is one place to the left, so the other one has to be one place to the right. And I'll go ahead and uh, do that one, since, let me see if I have enough room to do it. If I let x equal 1, then f of 1 would be 1 minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. And if I square the negative 1, that's going to be 1. Plus 1 would be 2. So that would be another point, 1, 2. And finally, this should be enough points to graph the parabola. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so this. Let me draw back in that axis of symmetry right here. All right, so that's what the graph of that parabola would look like. Okay? So this is graphing a parabola when it's written in standard form. But what about if it's written in general form? What if it's written in general form? So on this next page is graphing quadratic functions in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And we call this the 
general form. That would be the general form for a quadratic function. Alright, now the finding the vertex is different. Because here the vertex of a parabola whose function is in that general form is going to be this. The vertex will be this right here. Negative b over 2a for the x coordinate and f of negative b over 2a for the y coordinate. Here you have to use negative b over 2a to find the x coordinate. Once you find that x coordinate, you'll substitute the value of x into the quadratic function in order to obtain the y coordinate. Let's look at example 5 here on your handout. In this case, we're going to find the coordinate, the coordinates of the vertex for the parabola defined by the given quadratic function. And in this case, it's going to be f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 20x plus 8. So you can see that it is in the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And what I'm going to do here is identify a and b. That a is the coefficient of your x squared term. That will be 2. The b is the coefficient of the x term. That's, in this case, negative 20. And this is where we use x equal negative b over 2a to find the x coordinate of that vertex. So I'm going to substitute the b with negative 20. But I got the negative in front, so I put down that negative and substitute that b with that negative 20. So I got negative of negative 20 divided by 2 times a, which is 2. Well, the opposite of negative 20 is 20. Two, 2 times 2 will be 4, so 20 divided by 4 will be 5. So that x coordinate of the vertex is 5. So here I'm going to highlight and use a different color. Use a light green. That's your x coordinate of the vertex. Now to find the y coordinate of that vertex, I'm going to take that x equal 5 and substitute it for x into this function. So I got f of 5 is equal to 2 times x, which is 5, and that's squared, minus 20 times x again, that would be 5, plus 8. Now if I simplify this, if I square the 5, it will be 25, so I get 2 times 25, minus, I do 20 times 5, that's 100, and then plus 8, and then 2 times 25 will be 50, minus 100, plus 8, and if I do 50 minus 100, that's negative 50. Negative 50 plus 8 will be a negative 42. And this is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So now the vertex for this parabola would be 5, negative 42. That's the order pair for that vertex. And I will also go ahead and uh, identify that axis of symmetry as a bonus. That's, of course, x is equal to the x-coordinate of the vertex. And in this case, the x-coordinate of that vertex is this i. So x equals 5 is the axis of symmetry. Make sure you do say x equal to whatever that x coordinate of the vertex is because it is a line 
that has x is equal to whatever. Right now, we can apply the five-step procedure and graph parabolas in the form f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm reading from here. The only step that is different is how we determine the vertex. So step number one, you want to determine whether the parabola opens up or downward. But step number two, you have to apply this procedure that we just did. Steps three, four, and five are the same. Finding the x-intercepts, finding the y-intercept, and then graphing what you already have on the coordinate plane. So now let's look at this one example here, example six. So I'm going to scroll this up. Here we're going to... Then we're going to graph the quadratic function f of x equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Use the graph to identify the function's domain and range. Okay, so that's something else we're going to be doing here as well. So, let's start with uh, identifying or determining whether the parabola opens up or downward. We need to identify the a. And in this function here, and I'm going to highlight that, you can see here for the x squared, that coefficient is an understood 1. So here, a is equal to 1. And a is a positive number in this case, so that means that this particular parabola will open upward. Opens upward. Right, number two, this time we're finding the vertex. It is that the f of x function is written in general form, so we must use x equal to negative b over 2a. And we must identify the a and the b. Your a is that coefficient of your x squared term, that's 1. The b is the coefficient of x, that's negative 2. So next, we just substitute to find out what the x-coordinate is. We got the negative in front of the b, so I put that over. Your b is negative 2, so I got negative of negative 2 over 2 times a, which is 1. So negative of negative 2 will be 2 divided by 2 times 1, which will be 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is your x-coordinate of the vertex. For the y-coordinate of the vertex, you yeah, take that 1, substitute it for x in f of x. So here f of 1 will be 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. And if I simplify this, square the 1, that's going to be 1. Minus 2 times 1 will be 2, and then minus 3. Now, if I do 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 will be negative 4. So that negative 4 represents the y-coordinate of that vertex. So, for this parabola, the vertex... will be 1, negative 4. That represents, that will be your vertex for this problem. Now, step number 3 is finding the x-intercepts. So we take that function x squared minus 2x minus 3. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, in this case, 
case if this is a quadratic uh, expression on the left side. So I'm going to factor that into two binomials like this. Okay, now the x squared, I'm going to break that up as x and x. Now I need factors of negative 3 that will give me a middle term of negative 2. side of the 
axis symmetry, that other point has to be one place to the right. Okay, and that is for it to have symmetry. Okay, so these are the points that I need to draw the graph of this parabola. So that's how we uh, graph a uh, quadratic uh, function in general form. All right, the last thing I need to talk about, oh, before I go into the next thing, it does say identify the function's domain and range. So I'm going to substitute zero in for each x in the f of x function at the top. So this is going to be zero squared minus 2 times 0, minus 3. 0 squared is 0, minus 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3. Well, 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 will be negative 3. So my y-intercept will be the ordered pair 0, negative 3. Now I'll highlight that as well. Okay, so with the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts given, I'm going to use that to graph the uh, quadratic function. Okay. First of all, I'm going to plot the vertex of 1, negative 4. I'm going to underline that. So here I'll go to the right 1 and down 4 and draw that point. And also, and I keep forgetting this, the axis of symmetry. I'll tell you what. AOS for axis of symmetry, that's going to be x is equal to the x coordinate of my vertex, which is, of course, 1. So here's my axis of symmetry. That's that vertical dotted line. Crossing the x-axis at 1, going through the vertex, is going to separate the parabola into two equal parts. And AOS means axis of symmetry. So I'll highlight that. And then next, my two intercepts, 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. So to the right 3 on the x-axis, and to the left one and on the x-axis. All right, and then my y-intercept is 0, negative 3, so I stay at 0, but go down 3 and draw the point there. All right, compare this y-intercept with the axis of symmetry. That y-intercept is one place to the left. So, on the other side of the axis symmetry, that other point has to be one place to the right. Okay, and that is for it to have symmetry. Okay, so these are the points that I need to draw the graph of this parabola. So that's how we uh, graph a uh, quadratic uh, function in general form. All right, the last thing I need to talk about, oh, before I go into the next thing, it does say identify the function's domain and range. Let's talk about the domain for a quadratic function. Keep in mind, it is a quadratic function. Any x value that you assign to it, you're always going to get an f of x value for it. So the domain in interval notation will be from negative infinity to infinity. It's always going to be that. And 
now for the range, we look at the set of y values here. Now, let's think about this. We need to look at the smallest y value it will ever reach. And it's down here. The smallest y value here will be 4. And if it goes up, like this is opening up or so, the lowest y value it would ever reach is 4. Okay, and it's going to be going um, all the way up to positive infinity. So the range here would be, I'm going to use a bracket here, negative 4 to infinity. Negative 4 to infinity. All right, so that's how we find the range the domain and the range of any quadratic function. Okay, now let's go on to the next thing. Or this is the last thing I'm going to cover in this section. And that is minimum and maximum values of quadratic functions. Minimum and maximum values of quadratic functions. Alright, let's say we want to consider this function which is, of course, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Two things will happen. If a is positive or greater than zero, then you have a minimum. That minimum will occur at x equal negative b over 2a. The, maximum, the minimum value will be f of negative b over 2a. Or, the second case, if a is less than zero, that means if a is negative, then you're going to have a maximum. That maximum will occur at x equal negative b over 2a. Your maximum value will be f of negative b over 2a. So it's pretty much similar to uh, finding the vertex. x equal negative b over 2a gives you the x coordinate of the vertex f of negative b over 2a gives you the y coordinate of the vertex. Also, when you identify the function's domain and range, I need to give you a little bit of a hint on that. For the range, if you're finding the minimum, the interval notation would be in brackets, a, which is your minimum value to infinity. And then for the maximum value, in this case, the highest y value it will ever be, so it has to be from negative infinity up to that maximum y value, which is going to be b. Okay, so we're going to follow this for the range. Because now for the uh, for the quadratic, the domain is quite easy. It's just going to be negative infinity to infinity no matter what. Because of the fact that any x value that you assign to it, you will always get an f of x value for it. Okay? So let's take a look at this example. Let's say I want to consider the quadratic function f of x is equal to x squared, I mean 4x squared minus 16x plus 1,000. Now here I want to determine, without doing any graphing of this quadratic function, these three things. Whether the function has a min maximum or minimum value, and then find the minimum or maximum value and determine where it occurs and then identify the function's domain and range. Okay, so let's start with part A, determine whether it has a minimum or a maximum value. That's easy. We identify the coefficient of A in this case. So here's my function. The number in front of the x squared term is what x is what A is. And in this case, it's going to be 4. So a is equal to 4. 
it is positive. So that means this function will have a minimum value. A minimum value. Okay, and that's all of part A we have to do right there. So now we're going to have a minimum value. Now part B, we're going to find out what that minimum value is and where it occurs. That's where we have to use x equal negative b over 2a. In this case here, a is 4. The b is the coefficient of x. That's going to be negative 16. Okay. So here we use x equal negative b over 2a to find out where the minimum occurs. So I'm going to bring the negative over. The b, I substitute that with negative 16 divided by 2 times a, which is 4. Negative of negative 16 is 16, divided by 2 times 4, which is 8. 16 divided by 8 will be 2. So we know the minimum value occurs when x is equal to 2. Now we need that minimum value. So here I take my function f of x equal to 4x squared minus 16x plus 1,000 and substitute each x with 2. So this would be 4 times 2 squared minus 16 times 2 plus 1,000. Let's see. If I square this 2, I'm going to get 4. 4 times the 4 in front would be 16 minus 16 times 2 is 32 plus 1,000. And if I do 16 minus 32 plus 1,000, I will end up with 984. In this case, here, that 984 is the maximum value. It occurs when x is equal to 2. So that's part B. Now part C is identifying the functions, domain, and range. I'm going to use, you know, I just write it out, domain. It is a quadratic function, meaning any x value that you assign to it, you will always get an f of x value for it. So that means your domain in interval notation will be negative infinity to infinity. And then finally, the range. Now, we found a minimum value. Now, I'm going to scroll down here a bit and show you the interval notation for that. For a minimum value, has to be from that minimum value up to infinity. And that minimum value was 984. That means it, was the, it will be the lowest y value, I mean, yeah, the lowest y value it will ever be for that particular function. So that range there would be, I'm going to use a bracket, 984, because that's going to be included, to infinity. Okay. So this is your domain, and this is the range. example in this video. So we have the function. So we have this function f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 9. And I'm going to do the same thing. Part A, determine without graphing whether the function has a maximum or minimum value. Part B, find the minimum or maximum value and determine where it occurs and identify the function's domain and range. All right, start with part A. I need to know what A is. So here's my function that I'm going to highlight here. Sorry. Here we go. In this 
this case here, the coefficient of my x squared term is negative 2. And negative 2, of course, it is negative, so, and it's less than 0, so that means that tells me I have a maximum value. I have a maximum value for this particular function. Okay, and that's all we have to do for, do for part A. Now, part B, let's find out what that maximum value is and where it occurs. So that's what, here we use x equal negative b over 2a. So I already know what a is, that's 2. Your b is uh, the coefficient of x, that's 4. So here I got x equal negative b over 2a. That's going to be equal to, bring over the negative, substitute the b with 4, divided by 2 times a, which is negative 2. Bring on negative 4, divided by 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 would be 1. So that 1 is the x value where the maximum value occurs. Now let's identify what that maximum value is by evaluating f of 1. So I substitute the x in that function at the top with 1. So this would be negative 2 times the x is substituted with 1. That would be squared plus 4 times x is 1 minus 9. All right. Now if I square the 1, that's going to be 1. Times that negative 2 that's in front, that would be negative 2 plus 4, and then minus 9. Now, negative 2 plus 4 would be 2. 2 minus 9, negative 7. And of course, you can use your uh, calculator to type that in. You'll see it will be negative 7. And by the way, this negative 7 is going to be the maximum value. And it occurs when x is equal to 1. And then part C is identifying the function's domain and range. Well, the domain is this. If it is a quadratic function, that means any x value that you assign to it, you're always going to get an f of x value for it. So in interval notation, the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And then for the range, now let's think about this. The maximum value is negative 7. That means that's the highest y value that this graph will ever be. So that range will be, in interval notation, we have to say negative infinity up to the maximum, which is 7. Notice I'm using the bracket there. Okay. So that is how we determine maximum and minimum values here. And this will conclude this particular section on quadratic functions. The homework for that section will be available for you to complete. Please feel free to watch this video as many times as you need to. It will also be posted on Canvas as well for you to watch. Okay? And also please feel free to email me if you have any questions about uh, anything that's dealing with the homework of this particular section, okay? Thank you very much for listening.